Something that one of my boys put me on recently, like a little less than a year ago. Have y'all ever had like grilled lamb? Like before I had had lamb chops and they were good, but have you ever had grilled lamb to where it's like steak but just probably more flavorful? It, it, it is so good. First question came from my boy Big Q and appreciate you being a patron. He said, hey, Engraven, hope all is well with you and the family. Everything is good, especially grilled lamb. Uh, as a Ravens fan, I get very worried about Lamar Jackson's off the field activities. Like... What off the field activities, him like vibing or something, him having a party or him chilling with fans or something, him going home or what? Well, let's let me keep reading because I'm, I'm over here thinking like what off the field. Anyway, let me keep reading. He said, um, I know he is a young man, but Lamar needs to do some awareness about his football career. Uh, when the rumors that Ravens were concerned about Lamar's off the field activities, uh, and eating habits has some minor validity to it. Lamar was at my son's college playing lacrosse this offseason. Oh, okay. The, um, not Morgan. Nah, I forgot what college it was. I did see the the Instagram posts and all that with Lamar with the... I don't know what the, those things are called. I, I got uh, introduced a little tiny bit more to lacrosse um, watching Bel Air. But anyway, uh, so let's keep going. He said, uh, then playing football on the on the beach and playing basketball and slides in previous off seasons. Ah, oh, so so that's what you're talking about, like with him playing and stuff. Ah, I, I I wouldn't get worked up about that. I I, I wouldn't. Um, has anything happened to Lamar Jackson doing all that stuff in the off season? No. And it's like. That stuff that he puts on social media. Who knows what he's not putting on social media that he's doing. And he's just having fun. Like, I'm, I'm not ever going to get mad at anybody for having fun outside of work. Yeah, I understand. He's about to get some generational wealth. And he's going to get a boatload of money. And yeah, that, that you would hope that he doesn't get hurt. You don't want anybody to get hurt. But I wouldn't worry about any of that stuff. Because I, I just feel like it's just... Getting yourself like worked up for, for, for nothing I understand where you're coming from But I, I, I wouldn't worry about it Like, no Anyway, he said um, Do you think the Ravens will put clauses in Lamar's contract to risky behavior? Uh, I just keep thinking about the Robert Edwards uh, The Pro Bowl Patriots running back that got hurt playing volleyball on the beach um, No, I've, hmm. oh, yeah, I'm not sure who that is An accident could happen at any time Doing anything You you could be doing the quote unquote right thing uh, In an accident could happen You could be working out And an accident could happen You could be jogging Exercising You could be sitting down with your family at dinner uh, so, Some of the collard greens or something they, You accidentally slip them out You're off the fork And they fall on the, on the floor And then you're going down to pick them up And then whoa Your chair slides back and boom So I mean Yeah I, I just I, I don't think I don't think it's a big deal at all uh, I, Again like I said I see what you're saying But what do, do, do you want him to like Be bubble boy or something To where he's just like Alright All work No play That's it No No Even us at, 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 our, at our regular jobs We don't just focus on our job And not everybody makes <laughs> 23 million a year And Soon to be 40 some, 50 some, however much he get paid when he does get paid. Not all of us make that kind of money. But still, it's I just I don't think it's a I don't think it's a big deal. Yeah, this feels like a dream. And you know just what I mean. You see my boy, he like got to made it, how to made it. Boy, he's a fan and he like the Ravens, like the Ravens. And you know just what I mean. Next question came from my boy Nick Briggin. Appreciate you being a patron as well. He said, Engraven, I hope you're doing well. Just a quick question. How can some Ravens fans not understand what we mean when we say we want that guy at receiver? Bolden literally came in, got us over the hump, left, and Joe and the team have never been the same. What a beautiful, simple explanation. They're so straightforward. That's it. That's it. And they had Torrey Smith. He still was able to do his thing. Uh, in fact, having Bolden opposite of him helped him out so much. Whenever the Ravens had somebody good opposite of him, more that possession receiver opposite of him, it helped him out so much and made his job so much easier. Anyway, um, 
I think sometimes other fans think we are looking at other teams, but you really just have to look at the Ravens' history to see well, what why that type of play is so important. My question is, do you think Anquan Bolden's contribution to the Super Bowl is underappreciated? I don't think it's underappreciated, but, uh, yeah, I don't think it's underappreciated at all. Uh, you could you can have a conversation with a lot of people, and they know, like, no Anquan Bolden, no Super Bowl for the Ravens. Um, but I think when you uh, compare these Ravens right now, when you talk about these Ravens right now, Anquan Bolden's impact that he had on those Ravens, um, it, it, it gets overlooked a lot. And people, it doesn't come to mind for people a lot when they when we talk about adding that guy at wide receiver. I'm so glad you brought that up because a lot of times that doesn't even come to my mind when thinking about it. So I, I love that. So these next couple of questions came from my guy, Martin, and I appreciate you being a patron, Martin. He said, hope all is well with you. Uh, my comment today is about Marquise Brown. My main problem with Brown uh, is... I never saw him as an elite wide receiver. However, my prospect changed after watching him in the Broncos game. Now I just worry about his consistency. He disappears for weeks at a time. And also when Lamar is out, you're not just losing your QB1. You're also losing your wide receiver one. So you're losing two players in one. Just want to get your thoughts on that. Thanks for all the content. Well, nobody expects for <laughs> the starting quarterback uh, to go out. And Lamar Jackson and Hollywood, their connection is it's on a whole nother level, as we know. Um, but with Tyler Huntley, where Hollywood specializes, that's where Tyler Huntley struggles. Uh, that's the deep ball. Their connection, their chemistry was just off. And then it ended up being uh, the other quarterback that we had. I cannot think of his name right now. I, I can't think of his name right now. I ain't even going to try to spend too much. Not Josh Johnson. I, I can't think of his name right now. Anyway, and the other quarterback that we had, the chemistry is off. He is used to chemistry with Lamar. So, I mean, yeah, I, I see what you're saying. Yeah, when, when you're losing two players in one. And with Mark Andrews, everybody still kept on him. They were like, hey, Mark Andrews, that's a big target, big body. Hey, we still going to get him the ball. Um, but with Hollywood, it's different, uh, especially with the deep ball. So, um, you just, yeah, you, I mean, you obviously hope to have your quarterback one. All the time, because with, with Lamar, Hollywood's going off. Even with the drops, he's still going off. So, and yeah, sometimes there'll be some games where he, he won't have much numbers. It's gonna, that's going to happen. That's why I say they should add more. They should keep adding more. So when one guy has an off game, then you have somebody else who's like, oh, I got his back. And then you have somebody else who's like, oh. so you get what I'm saying. He also said, um, team, keep it clean. Let's power through this off season. My question today is, do you think the Ravens have gotten better? Uh, in my own opinion, I say no. Obviously, we have the draft still coming up, but there are so many holes and questions on the roster. My biggest concern is left tackle. Judging from everything the Ravens have done to this point, they're making the same mistake from last year. It seems to me they are going to at this as if Ronnie will be back for week one when they should be playing it like he's not going to be back. Yes, I understand we signed Morgan Moses, but I think that was a move for right tackle. Then on the other side of the ball, Adafe, or what? well, let's talk about that first, that side of the ball. Um, I... Do I think we got better? Do I think the Ravens got better uh, this offseason? No. Nope. I don't think they got better. Um, yeah, I don't think they got better. Because, yeah, no. They didn't get better. They they didn't get significantly worse. They just they didn't really get better, in my opinion. Um, so, again, it's, it's still early. And like you said, the draft's still coming up. So, uh, I, I think... Um, as far as the secondary, in the second, they, they gained Demarcus Williams. That's an upgrade. And you still got Brandon Stevens. Um, you lost to Deshaun Elliott. You lost to Tavon Young. You're losing to Jimmy Smith. Uh, you lost Anthony Averitt. Um, So as far as depth, the depth's not there. The starters are better, but the depth's not there. Um, and you'll be getting our Darius Washington back. And, of course, obviously, Marcus Peters and Marlon Humphrey is pretty big. Um, yeah, overall, yeah, I, was, yeah, I would say they, um, they, yeah, they, they didn't get better. They're not better, but they didn't get significantly worse, but they, they got a lot of work to do, like you said. Um, and as far as the, uh, the tackle situation, Ronnie Stanley, um, yeah, it is super early because, yeah, they signed Morgan Moses. They still got Juwan James now, too. They still got him. I thought they were going to cut him and save that, like, what is it, like $2 million, $3 million, something like that. I thought they were going to do that, but they didn't. So... That could also be another plan for them. Stay ready so you ain't got to get ready. So, 
I'm, I'm cool with it. But um, the draft, the draft will tell a lot of the story with Ronnie Stanley, too. Uh, so that's something to look out for. And he said, then on the other side of the ball, uh, Adafi Away is a one-man army on that D-line. It's just him and Michael Pierce. Uh, Ma well, and Broderick Washington, too. Uh, and Matabike as well. Uh, Tyus Bowser's hurt. You still got Daylon Hayes coming back, too. You got Derek Wolf as well. Um, so it's slim, but he ain't, them two ain't the only dudes. Uh, Marlon and Marcus are coming off of injuries, and the Ravens have not addressed the cornerback position yet. Uh, we hope Marlon and Marcus will be ready week one, but you should at least sign some depth. I I'm sure they will. Uh, and with the cornerback market, it's been surprisingly slow. Patrick Peterson got signed. He went back to the Vikings. Stephon Gilmore still out there. Still waiting on the Giants to do something with James Bradbury. Um, so I know there's still more corners out there, too. Bryce Callahan, he's still out there, too. He used to be a really good slot corner. I'm not sure how he is now. Uh, but you got some options. And then, of course, you got some in-house guys. Brandon Stevens, you can have him at corner. Ardarius Washington, I have probably have him play corner too. So we'll see. And then of course the draft steals. Like the the draft is gonna do a, a it's gonna do a it should do a significant amount of work. It ain't gonna be all the work, but it should do a little significant amount of work. Um, he said, "I'm starting to think the Ravens intend on using all ten picks, which we all hope is not the case. But with as many holes as we have, and only bringing three players, uh, I see the Ravens using every pick. Just wanted to get your thoughts. Yeah, no, nah, I um." It's it's still like semi early. Uh, well, I mean, for the rest of the AFC, they, they like, oh, it's late now. We've been making plenty of moves already, but for Ravens, uh, it's semi early. Um, so they still got time uh, to address and fill some of the holes even before the draft, and then of course there's after the draft too, because you know the Ravens. They love those cap cuts. Next question came from my boy Patricio. He said, Man, Graven, I hope you're doing good. I'm doing awesome. And I got a question for you. Do you think the Ravens are going to be able to acquire a wide receiver like DK Metcalf? They can. Do I think they will? No. I don't. I want them to. I hope they do. But I don't think they will. Because it's just, it's, it's not in their nature. So, but I, I hope that they prove me wrong. Uh, he said, you know there have been some rumors that the Ravens want to trade for him. I personally would love this. It would make our offense so electric, and with our defense, this team would be so good. Just imagine DK Metcalf, Hollywood, Rashad Bateman, and our tight end Mark Andrews and Nick Boyle. We could draft a lineman, and our offense would be back to what it was, and even better, in my opinion. And again, greetings from Cancun. Hope you are having a nice day. Appreciate that, Patricio. Yeah, it'd be nice. It'd be nice. Um, I'm just, I'm not expecting them to. I'm, I'm, I'm really not I, Again I would love for them to do it But I just I don't expect them to do it And he said also Do you think it would be a good move For the Ravens to sign Odell Beckham Jr. Uh, it couldn't hurt But he's hurt So it couldn't help right now either um, He would just be there uh, He would be a, a rehab candidate um, Because he wouldn't be ready to play yet So that's that. Uh, but it'd be nice, like, okay, you you sign him. He'd be on the, the back burner for when he does get healthy. And then he can come in and contribute, and you have that guy uh, at wide receiver. Um, but if if they sign Odell, that could not be it. That could not, like, because I love Odell Beckham Jr., nice receiver, but there's the injuries, man. There's the injuries, and he, like, you couldn't. You couldn't put all your eggs in the Odell Beckham Jr. basket. Um, and if, if they signed him, they couldn't be like, all right, hey, see, we got a guy. No, uh-uh. You, you would still have to go out and get somebody else. Next question came from my guy, Harry. He said, how are you doing in Ravens and the rest of the team keep it clean, fam? I was wondering, since everyone else is giving their young QBs weapons, shouldn't the Ravens do the same for Lamar? Yeah, for sure. But anyway, he said, I mean, the rumors are that DK Metcalf is available for the right price, and I believe the Ravens have the goods to help the Seahawks with a quick rebuild. I think I'll pick 45, 141, Miles Boykin, Tylen Wallace, Tyson Williams, and Ben Powers would do the job. Hey, um, I would love if they could get him. I, I would love it. Um, and they, like you said here and a lot of other people have said as well, uh, that your thinking is that the Seahawks will not only be looking for picks but players too. Um, cause that will give them some young options to see how they can contribute as the Seahawks go through this rebuild. Cause yeah, they, they literally just traded away their franchise quarterback. Got a couple first round picks, some second round picks, some other picks. I forgot what all picks they got, but they're starting over. So, um, if they're starting over, they'd be willing to take a chance on some guys and they low, low contract guys, guys that's not breaking the bank, anything like that. Cause they in a, in a test phase 
right now. So they're testing some guys out. Oh, how does this guy play? Is he worth to keep around? What type of player is he? Does he fit with our scheme? Does he fit with our system? Does he fit with our culture? And they got to actually establish a new culture now. What, what is it going to be? How long is it going to take to establish it? They got to take all those things into consideration with their draft picks and anybody who they will bring over. So, yeah, I, I would love if the Ravens did it, but I just I, I don't see it happening. Next question came from my guy Phil. He said, I know in this year's draft, defense and offensive line are the main two focuses. Uh, but like you've been saying, you would like to see a receiver taken in the first three rounds, which I agree with. Watkins gone and Boykin most likely uh, getting traded or cut. Uh, I've watched the highlight videos of two day two receivers, George Pickens from Georgia. He was their number one wide receiver. He returned from ACL injury last season for the college championship. And Christian Watson, who has speed as a deep threat. 800 yards, 46 receptions, seven touchdowns last season. Do either of these sound interesting to you? Um, and he said he forgot to mention that Christian Watson went to North Dakota State. Yes, sir. Um, either or. Or both. You know, like me, I'm, I'm greedy. Um, with, with Pickens. Um, Pickens is a very popular name right now. He's been... Floating around. Watson, too. Watson, too. Um, but Pickens, I, I would love, like, obviously him as a player, but just his attitude, too. Ravens, they they could use some getting a little nasty uh, on offense. It's a little bit. Because, they, again, they got Marcus Peters on defense. And he, I mean, he, he nasty enough for the whole team. But you have that same sort of swagger on offense, too. Oof. Could do wonders. It could do one is it could build confidence. Um, and you would have a wide receiver who would be running his mouth to opposing cornerbacks. Running his mouth. But, hey, if you're going to run your mouth, you got to back it up. So with him being one of the better wide receivers in this draft, hey, okay. Ravens, give him opportunities to back it up. Let's see what he could do. Next question came from my guy, Devon. He said, hey, Graven, first off, hope you and Carl and the rest of the family living a blessed life. Hey, appreciate that, man. Uh, this was from a previous post I made, but I just wanted to hear your thoughts on it. Don't know if you caught it, but I sure did. It was on live TV. Uh, so we're going to act like the shortest man in the combine, Calvin Austin III, didn't just leap 39 inches, jump the longest long jump we've seen, uh, which is twice his height, standing at 5'7". Since the combine started in, 20, in 2003, uh, he ran the fastest time we ever saw by a human being right in front of our eyes. But what got me hot is we let them tell us we saw something different, all because they didn't plan for a wide receiver to be more desired than their coveted QBs and mess up their old out-of-date combine draft process. The NFL is crooked. God, I love my Ravens uh, in a league full of criminals. Shaking my head. Uh, going to cheat the black man out of his money and his shine. Oh, so he's saying that um, it's looking like he, he got some screenshots of how Calvin Austin ran a 4.03. A Not a 4.3, but a 4.03. Then a 4.09. Then a 4.18. What? If that's true, if that these are accurate, that's crazy, man. That's like a insane amount of speed that just don't make no sense. That'd be crazy, man. He said on another note, even uh, though I still think what the combine did to Calvin Austin the third was wrong and unjust, could work out for the Ravens if we can manage to snatch him on day two, or day three, and have him be a Tyreek Hill type of player. Hope the Ravens give him a shot. What are your thoughts? Mm. Um. I I don't see it happening. I uh, that'd be something. I wouldn't be mad. Uh, but the Ravens still they need more bigger frame wide receivers. Um, they need more guys that's gonna go up and get it. I know you talked about his uh his vertical jump. Um, but yeah, if he was like if they ended up drafting him later on, okay, cool. But you gotta make sure early on you you hit on a a, a big time a, a big guy wide receiver. Uh, with good size, uh, good jumping out the gym ability too. Um, just that big frame, man. Give Lamar a wider uh, target, a bigger catch radius. Um, so that's that's what I would say. But yeah, I wouldn't mind him uh, later on in the draft. Speaking of wide receivers, next question came from my guy Mac. He said, too harsh on Hollywood. Hey, Graven, it's been a minute since I dropped the question, but I hope all is well. My question is... How, are we as Ravens fans disrespecting Hollywood? Uh, me personally, I feel like we are not giving Hollywood the respect he deserves. Since he's been here, his numbers have improved every year. It's true. And the season he got, this season he got his first 1,000 yard season. Yes, he did struggle with drops and had a horrible game against the Lions, but compared to other receivers that we drafted, he is setting the bar very high. Yes, that's true. Um, maybe it's just me. I don't know, but I feel like 
uh, Hollywood could potentially be a top 10 or 15 receiver if he continues to progress the way that he has. But what are your thoughts? Thanks for all the Ravens updates. And let's continue to get to this road of a million subs. Oh, appreciate that. That's, that's, that's a lot of people. Um, yeah, with Hollywood, I, I know a lot of Ravens fans of. A lot of them don't appreciate Hollywood. A lot of them don't like Hollywood. A lot of them, oh, we should have drafted somebody else before him. Um, and with Hollywood, he has, as far as the top 10, 15 receiver thing, if Lamar would have stayed healthy, Hollywood could have easily been that. He could have easily been that. He just, he got a, I think with a lot of fans with Hollywood, again, you, you remember the bad more than the good. A lot of times the bad to people, the bad can stick out more than the good. And that's not just with football. That's just with a lot of stuff with life. Um, somebody did you wrong. Um, if they really did you wrong, and you uh, y'all had a lot of good times together, but that 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 wrong that they did to you, it'll just stick out. And you be like, oh, man. Ah. So I think with Hollywood with the drops, those stick out to people. They stick out to people. They like, man, he dropped the touchdown against the Steelers. He dropped the two touchdowns against the Lions. He had other drops. Da da da. da. But they will uh. Talk about that, but won't talk about the good. And Hollywood, yeah, you do got to clean up the drops. We know that. He knows that. Everybody knows that. Um, but he's capable of a lot. And his season, even with the drops that he had, his season was going pretty good. But then his quarterback ended up going out. And that, that changed everything. And the last question on this episode came from my boy George K. He said, agree to disagree. Uh, what's up, Engraven? Hope you and your family and the team keep it clean, fam, are doing well. Appreciate it, man. I haven't missed a video in a few years now and have even had a few questions get through to you for your question from subs. And we have jabbed back and forth a little bit in the comments on occasion. Nothing but love and respect, my friend. Appreciate it, man. Uh, but as you see in the topic area, sometimes I have to agree to disagree. But always keep it respectful and team keep it clean. LOL. As most fans, Giro gotta go. I 100% agree with that, but here comes the but. Okay, let's let's see what he's about to say. Um, but I still believe in Harbs. Oh, okay, that was the but. That's a that's a big but right there. Um, he said I still believe in EDC as well. Uh, I do agree that there has to be some changes in philosophy dealing with team building. I do not believe we should mortgage our draft picks to try to do what the Rams have done. See, that's what I keep saying. Rams are not the only way to do it. They're not the only way to do it. But Ravens can they could come up off of some more of them draft picks. They ain't got to hoard all the picks. They ain't got to give them all away like the Rams, but they ain't got to hoard all of them. You can meet somewhere right there in the middle. Uh, but anyway, yes, it has worked for them. But usually the teams that go to the proverbial, that go the proverbial all-in route do not make it to the big game. So what about the Ravens and the route that they've been taking? How's that been working for them with making it to the big game? How's that been making it for, for them, uh, making it to the AFC Championship? So that's why I say um, philosophy got to change. Like we talked about with Harbaugh, we talked about EDC earlier, a, a lot of the Greg Roman, as far as the front office and coaching staff, a lot of philosophies got to change. But that actually starts from the top. That starts from the top. This is not Eric DeCosta's team. This is not John Harbaugh's team. This is not Greg Roman's team. This is Steve Bashotti's team. This is Steve Bashotti's team. So if any philosophy change is going to occur, it's probably going to have to start with him. So anyway. Uh, he said, if you look back uh, at a lot of the seasons, a lower seed or even wild card team gets hot at the right time to win it all. Look no further than our division rival, the Bengals. Mostly draft picks and a few under the radar signings. A lot of under the radar. Last year, they went crazy in free agency on defense. They went wild with it and it worked. They got playmakers. But anyway, uh, LOL. Here's another but. But that means EDC and his minions need to get it right in the draft. Whew. Yeah, they have certainly been struggling there. Struggling big time there. It's been getting better every year, but it's still been a struggle. Because um, it's just been, they need more impact from the draft. So if, if you're going like, to rely on the draft so heavily, then you have to get impact. You have to. you got to get impact players. And a plethora of them. Not every player in every single draft is going to be a hit. We get that. But you got to have way more hits than misses. If you're going to be solely reliant, not solely, solely, but you're going to be very, very reliant on the draft. You got to hit. Uh, anyway, he said, Ravens draft picks have been hit or miss under DaCosta. We know, but the same can be said with Ozzy's draft classes. I agree. I agree. That, that is very true. Yes, well, he was obviously the GM for way longer than Eric DaCosta. And he got guys like Ray Lewis. Yo, he got Ed Reed. Heap. He got um, Jonathan Ogden, Terrell Suggs. 
Uh, he, he got a this Lamar Jackson, Mark Andrews. Anyway, um, but there were a lot of misses too, and there there had been some very bad drafts too. So that 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 has to be talked about. Um, there have been some hits. There have definitely been some hits for sure, but there's certainly been a lot of misses as well. Anyway, uh, he said, however, as I have heard you say, our draft classes have been improving yearly. Oh, he's just, <laughs> see, I just, <laughs> I appreciate that. We were just saying that about Eric DaCosta. Uh, I do not see a reason to blow everything up and start over. Oh, no, 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 no. Ain't, ain't nobody say they need to blow up and start everything over. My thing is just they could do some things differently. Man, you ain't, ain't got to blow it up, man. You, but you could certainly that that philosophy change would make a big difference. And he said, and now Lamar's contract, I do believe it's in his best interest to sign sooner rather than later. Ooh, tell me why. Tell me why. He said, not because he is a dual threat quarterback, but because he is a football player and playing football is a gladiator sport. It's not if you get hurt, but when. So I hope you felt the same way about Joseph Flacco. Joseph Vincent Flacco, I believe that's his middle name. Um, and really any quarterback or player that just hasn't signed a deal yet. Now, look at Dak Prescott. Tell me if you think that if Dak Prescott, he was on a franchise tag, and he, he ain't signed yet. He broke, what was it? He broke his ankle, broke his collarbone. He broke, he broke something. Ended his season. What happened the following year? Cowboys paid him. They paid him. So if Dak Prescott, and I like Dak Prescott, he's nice. So, but if Dak Prescott, if he, if he got paid after breaking whatever bone it was that he broke, if he, he still got paid. If Deshaun Watson, who is not even guaranteed to play a full 17 game schedule this year, it's possible, probably unlikely, because you know NFL's a business, but it's possible that he doesn't even play a snap this year. But again, that's highly unlikely. If he just got $230 million af after being out all last year, obviously due to the Texans, they ain't want to play him because of all this stuff. And then with all these pending cases and da 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 da, he still got $230 million guaranteed. Guaranteed. Lamar Jackson going to be A-OK. -okay. But let's get back to the question. Uh, he said, um, he is taking a huge risk in my eyes as an ACL tear or Achilles would absolutely cause him to lose money because his explosiveness is one of the things that makes him special. I'm all about Lamar getting paid, all for it, but a serious injury would absolutely diminish his value along with our hopes of another championship. It would be in his best interest knowing he would still be getting his money if a serious injury would happen. Not so great for us as Ravens, but security for Lamar. Yeah, I, I, I disagree Because again he, Like we explained Lamar's going to get his money He's going to get his money So many people They talk about the ifs and the buts Instead of what is And the what's When it comes to Lamar Jackson So many people say oh what if he gets hurt What happens if he hurts something Or if he tears this Or if he It's so many ifs with Lamar but let's talk about what it is. Let's talk about what it is. This bone bruise, that is the first serious injury that he has ever sustained in the NFL. Ever. His only other injuries that he had? Stomach ache, bubble guts, COVID, flu. That's it. But as far as his body, no. He has been very healthy so when i all when i hear people talk about the oh what if he gets hurt you could literally say that about any single player in the nfl anybody with lamar jackson he hasn't been getting hurt again last year was the first time we got to stop with this whole injury narrative with lamar jackson because he is not an injury prone player if his first year and if, if, if his rookie year Say, for instance, he like something happened with his leg. And then his following year, that something happened with that same leg. Then the following year, something happened with that same leg. I'll be, I'll be like, oh, man, oh, man, he injury prone. Yeah, it, it probably, he, he should probably get that bread now because he ain't looking too good. 
Ronnie Stanley Never played a full 16 games before Then when they added 17 games It was like oh big yikes But he got his money He, he got his bread And then the, not even 7 days later after he got his bread Boom He got hurt and it was a freak accident because I think T.J. Watt like rolled right into his ankle, something like that. But Ronnie Stanley had been injury prone, and he got his money. But Lamar Jackson is not injury prone. He will get his money. He's going to get it. But again, the, the whole injury narrative, it's got to stop. It's got to stop. We, we got to stop the ESPNs, the NFL Networks. The, the, we we got to stop listening to when people talk about that Because it's so many people that they, they want That's what they want to happen That's what they want to go down They want that to be right so bad About Lamar being hurt Lamar, because and, and when, when he got hurt With that bone bruise against the Browns Oof, so many reporters they, they had been waiting on that moment And they were like, see, we knew it was going to happen so many fans have been waiting on that moment. See, we knew it was going to happen. We knew it. he runs around too much, even though he got the injury on a pass in play and a pass that was completed, too. But anyway, um, he said, and now to the cap is cap thing. Oh, yeah, I want to hear this. I'm, 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 I'm loving this, by the way. I, I love you, George. Thank you for the, you, this is a very fun, great question. Great way to end off the, this episode. He said, and now to the cap is cap thing. Yes, the cap can be manipulated and you can kick the can down the road and use many other loopholes to get what you want uh, or who you want. But, LOL, there will come a time when these teams will have to hit the reset button. And when is that going to be? When is that going to be? When is it going to be for the Saints? When is it going to be for the Rams? When is it going to be for the Chiefs? Because people have been saying that for years. 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 Is the salary cap going to go down? Is there going to be a year where the NFL just, all right, all right, y'all, we're done. That's it. No more football. And anybody who's over the cap, oh, well, psh, pay up. Pay us that bread. The time has come. No, they'll be, they'll be A-OK. -okay. Anyway, um, he said it will catch up to them. <laughs> I'm wondering when. Uh, I don't want that to be the Ravens. As a fan, I do want us to be able to continue yearly, and I don't mean making the postseason in one and done. I mean like the early Flacco days. Flacco was winning a postseason game every year for his first five seasons. I think it was. Uh, and we were a team that was consistently a threat that teams didn't want to see in the playoffs. During that time, we could have won a couple championships if a kick was made here or a catch was made there. We were in it every year. Yeah, that's being a contender. When you're winning playoff games and when you're actually in AFC championships, that's being a contender. What the Ravens are right now has not been. They've been having some nice regular seasons, but postseasons, it, again, that's why I want more playmakers. Just keep saying it, but people don't want to hear me. But anyway, um, he said, if Lamar was signed now, because the market is pretty much set, yes, Burrow, Herbert, and Wilson will get new contracts, but I don't believe every team is going to be dealing out a Watson deal, as most believe his contract is an exception just to get him in Cleveland. And that Josh Allen and Rodgers deals are still what the market is. Uh, it's hard. You know, I, I, I can see that. It's hard for the front office and EDC to get players to come if we don't know exactly how much has to be set aside for Lamar. It leaves the, the team guessing as to what kind of contracts it's able to offer. Yeah, that's a very good point. Because um, especially on offense, because it's like, man, they could be trying to get somebody. They could be thinking about getting somebody. But they, oh, man. Well, what about Lamar? What if Lamar stays? What if Lamar leaves? I don't know. This is why you should have been going all in on Lamar. You should have been on it a long time ago. Had you been on it a long time ago, oh, you would have been in much better shape. But anyway, uh, he says, so Engraven, if you could sit down with Ona Bashadi and discuss the outlook, the vision and future of the Ravens organization, what would you recommend? I, I would ask, like, if I could sit down with him in the most respectful way possible, I, I would love to ask what, what is your vision for these Ravens? What are you trying to accomplish? What, what do you want to see them do? Do you want to see them just be a competitive team that, hey, regular season, things go, things go pretty good for the most part. When your team is healthy, when your quarterback's healthy, things go pretty good. But in the postseason, it's like, pfft. do you want to just be competitive or do you want to be a contender? And I would ask him what he thinks. What, what do you think right now in 2022? What do you think it's going to take for this team to be a true, not competitive, 
But what do you think it's going to take for this team to be a contender? And how do you feel this team should address being a contender? And do you feel like you have really went all in with this quarterback? Because you've never had a quarterback like this ever. There's never even been another quarterback like this ever. So do you feel like you've done the most and you've put this team and this quarterback in the best position to have success? As far as your front office hirings, coaching hirings, personnel decisions. Do you feel like you have really put this team in the best position to be contenders? Not competitive, but contenders. I, I would love to have that sit down with them. For sure. Um, and what would I recommend? Oh, come on. We've been recommending stuff for the longest. You already know. <laughs> uh, he said, also, after just seeing the Devontae Parker trade, which I think disappointed me more than the Bobby Wagner deal. Really? Not, not me. Bobby Wagner was, um, that one was much more disappointing than Devontae Parker. Devontae Parker, like, ah, I was like, whatever about that one. But um, Bobby Wagner was like, oof. Especially because the Ravens have been mentioned so much with Bobby Wagner. And anyway, just thinking about the possibilities. Uh, anyway, he said, because I, I, I feel like he was kind of lo the low-key acquisition we would have been able to make. And he could have been that guy. Devontae Parker, that guy? He said, I have to think EDC does have something in the works because to me, EDC is a proud guy and losing out on players like we have been has to be leaving a sour taste in his mouth and has to get him like a kick in the, well, it's a family show, but you get what I'm saying. <laughs> I do believe the Ravens could be planning something big, whether in the draft or during the draft. I just can't see the organization laying down with all the free agents that have chosen. Well, not us. LOL. Shaking my head. Sorry for the length of this, but I just started flowing. Love the content and the team keep it clean family. Hey, I appreciate this so much, man. I, I, I love that question. I love the breakdown. I love the... Um, the uh the rebuttals and everything to stuff that we've been saying i love the conversation I, I i loved it that was one of my favorite questions that we've done uh in a little minute so i appreciate it i appreciate y'all watching this episode of questions from subs and we out shout out to engraving